Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Premiere scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you all about components, also known as properties. These are the elements you apply to clips, uh, such as motion, opacity, or any effects that you've applied. And we can actually access these, go in and change the values, or even apply keyframes inside of Premiere with the script. So today I'm going to be going over how to go down and access these properties or components, how we can get their display name, their match names, as well as some of the methods or things we can read and do with them. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link and also check out this Premiere script editor, which I'm continually making updates on, such as now we now have removed spell check, which would make everything that is misspelled from a dictionary have a red squiggly line. So make sure you check that out. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new script and just start from scratch here. Still need to fix that, but we're going to start off by going down and grabbing a clip and reading its components. The way we do that, we're going to start by grabbing, say, a sequence. So I'll say var sequence is equal to my app.project.active sequence. We're going to assume they have a sequence open here in the panel. And next, we're going to grab one of the video tracks with a clip on it. In this case, video track one has our clip. So I'll say var v track is equal to our sequence. We're going to reference all the video tracks and number one. Uh, is going to be index number zero as arrays work in programming. So now we have the video track. We want to get the first clip. We just have one clip in this case. So I'll say var clip is equal to our V track. And we want to reference the clips inside of the V track. And again, to grab the first thing in an array, you grab index zero. So to grab the first clip, we should now have this clip here. To make sure this is working, I'll say alert clip.name. Save this and let's go ahead and run it. And I believe this should be clips, not clip. Save it again and run it. And there we go. Now we're getting the name of our clip. Now we can look inside of the sort of effect controls panel using dot components. This will give us a list of all of these video components that we have associated with it. If you wanted to check the audio, you would need to select the clip on the audio track, which gives you access to specifically the audio effects. But in our case, we just want to be looking at the video. We can go into the motion, look at the rotation scale and all that. So let's go ahead and loop through all of our components. To do that, I'll say for, create a for loop, var i is equal to, let's start at zero, and we'll say i is less than our clip.components, and checking the guide to get the number of components, we need to say dot num items. So we'll say dot num items, and then i plus plus. Then we'll go ahead and say, add a little space here, alert clip.components index i, and I want to grab the display name, which is what is displayed inside of Premiere right here. So now when I run this, we're going to get opacity, motion, false color, and those are the three video effects we have applied. You can see it's actually not uh, reading the time remapping. I think if you actually made the time remapping enabled by adding some keyframes, then this would then be visible. But in this case, it's just grabbing these three plugins that are enabled and visible. So real quick, if we want to go ahead and maybe say var motion effect, we can just call it that. And we want to get the one that says motion. So I'm going to say if clip uh, dot components i dot display name is equal to motion, then our motion effect is going to be equal to clip dot components i. This will give us a variable with specifically this motion effect. So now I can go in and adjust the individual properties or read them. So if I say, after all this for loop, we still have the variable. So we'll say motion effect dot properties. And let's try and get the first property. Let's get the, I think it's display name, it may be name. If I go ahead and alert this, save it. You can see we get position. 
And if we go into effect controls, the very first property indeed is position. So that's basically how we access the clips, the components within them, and then the properties of those components. Now the properties are kind of where the fun is because you can change the values, say change the position, or you can even add keyframes to achieve a lot of cool effects. I'm gonna change my motion effect variable to this effect because we're looping through our effects. I'm gonna remove this if statement and say this effect is equal to the current component we're looking at. Then I'm gonna add another for loop and I'm gonna loop through all of the properties of the current uh, effect. So I'll say var uh, e is equal to zero, e is less than this effect dot properties. And I'll have to refer to the guide here, but if I say dot properties dot, see what we need to get the length of the properties. It might just be length actually, if it doesn't tell us. So let's try dot length, E plus plus. And this time I'm going to say, alert this effect dot properties, uh, E dot display name. Save this and run it. And now we're gonna get all of the different properties looped through of all of our effects. So this is how we can loop through and get all of that information. Now, what can we do theoretically each time we have one of these properties? Well, first I'll go ahead and create a variable called this property. Or we can even say this prop. And we're gonna set that equal to this effect.properties e. Here's a list of all the useful stuff that we can do with our property. So we have this prop, which is a reference to the current property. It's not inside of our for loop right now, but just imagine that we can apply all of these different things or change these things for any single property for any effect inside of Premiere. The first thing we can do, which I've gone over before in a tutorial, is how to add a key, which we can just apply a keyframe with a dot add key method uh, to any property given whatever time we give it. Another thing we can do is get the number of total keyframes for the property by saying dot get keys. We can also get the current value, which is pretty useful. And this will give us, depending on what kind of value type it is, different results. Uh, it won't necessarily give you 960 by 540 for our position. It might just give us the value of one, indicating that that is the multiplier of the default position. Uh, the default position in any Adobe application is always half of the width of the composition or sequence and half of the height. And if I multiply that by one, I get 960 by 540. So sometimes when you read the values from these properties, you're going to get strange things. Just know that sometimes they're converted to be normalized to whatever the default is. A little bit complicated, but as you experiment more with these properties, you'll understand. Uh, another thing we can do is get the value at a certain time, a certain key at a certain time, we can't necessarily provide it the certain key index like we can in After Effects scripting. We have to tell it what time the keyframe occurs at to get the value of that particular key. And we can also use dot get value at time, which again just references a specific time. Um, and this will, if you want to check maybe between a keyframe, this will work as well. Then we have dot is time varying. This lets us know if there are any keyframes applied or if the stopwatch is enabled. Then of course we can remove a key, very self-explanatory and useful. I believe you also have to provide a time for that. Uh, let's go ahead and check in the guide, dot remove key Re requires a time, yes. We can get the color value. We can set the color value of a property, uh, giving it alpha, red, green, blue, and a true or false if you want to update the user interface. This is a common theme in Premiere scripting. Uh, we can also generally set the value of something. So we give it the value if we want to change like the rotation, we can give it a value here of like 90. And then if we want to update the UI, we can say true. And you'll usually want to update the UI because uh, Premiere has kind of like a slow update system and you can force it by saying true. And lastly, we can set the value at a certain key, which we provide it with the time that the uh, keyframe occurs at, the new value we want to set it to, and if we want to update the UI. Now, lastly, I'm just going to uh, copy this one line of code, this prop.get value, and let's alert the value of each of our properties as we loop through them. So I'll save this and run it. And we actually need to say dot to string because in Premiere scripting, we need to only alert uh, strings. So we get 100 
18, 0. And as you can see, we get all kinds of different values. And uh, these look like the the actual position. So I was wrong in saying it's 1 and 1. It's 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Uh, it must just be based on the comp dimension, so the sequence dimensions. But you can kind of see as we go through these different values, uh, when you have something like a color or text, you might get strange values like this. And that is something for another tutorial. But you can go through again and get all the values of these properties, do other things like uh, change the color, add keyframes, uh, check the value of keyframes, and much more. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this to learn how to use components and properties, as well as the code for this Premiere script editor. Also down there in the description, check us out on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, link in the description, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, help us out financially, and get lots of cool perks. So thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.